Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Peace be upon you all. It is my honor to be here tonight and I promised uh, Chaplain Sana Nadim might be since 15 years that I will come here. And this was an opportunity today and to see you all here in this beautiful gathering. May God make the whole world like this gathering. It's very difficult really to speak about subjects of today because they say I am a provocative person. I'm not, but the struggle that we are facing between good and evil makes everyone wants to say something to speak out loud in order that we can fix ourselves from within ourselves. As uh, Mrs. Sunita was saying, that he went everywhere or she went everywhere, that poetry that she read, and went to the mosques, to the shrine, to the to the Kaaba, to the to to different areas, to the temple, to the uh, synagogue, and didn't find God there. But when she, when he or she looked within himself, they found God there, and that's what I begin with that topic tonight is that Prophet, peace be upon him, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi afdalu salatu was salam, he said that ma wasi'atni samai wa la ardi walakin wasi'ani qalba abdi al-mu'min neither my heavens nor my earth contained me but the heart of the believer contained me. I think this is a great saying of prophet that the heart of everyone can contain the manifestation of his Lord in his or her heart. That's why I would like to say that this university, Stony Brook University is a great university because it has a diversity of people and people are coming to learn. And teachers are struggling, students are struggling, and it is good to focus our struggle, how to be creative and how to be able to be ambassadors for communities outside because there is a lot of struggle between good and evil. Mrs. Hannah Nadim asked me to speak about this subject, which I see which is a very difficult subject. But I would say that this struggle is not born today. It is struggle from the beginning of our life when Adam and Eve, they ate from the tree and they were being under a test by struggling between what God said to them and what Satan said to them. And it was a situation that they did eat from the tree, although God prevented them and said, don't eat from the forbidden tree. From, so from a religious point of view, we see the struggle began from beginning of the time. Because God has said in Holy Quran, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا God had inspired the self with what is good for the self and what is bad. So no one can say, I don't know what is good. 
Because everyone has goodness in his heart. And everyone knows what is bad. God will not create something without telling you, be careful. So our duty is to try to be more toward the good and less toward the bad. And we can see Abel and Cain at the beginning of the time when God ordered them to give a sacrifice. Abel went and get the best of his ramps to give to as a sacrifice to his Lord as religion tells us in different religions. And Cain gave the worst that he has from a sick ramp that is dying already. So one was giving the best, the one that was offering the worst. So the one who was offering the worst get angry because he was ignorant, as the professor said, he was ignorant, was not able to learn what is good in his heart. He was ignorant of what is real and what is not real. A sick lamp, a ramp is going to die. I am going to offer something bad to my Lord. So this, is neg this negativity is inside his heart from the beginning of the world. So he got frustrated from his brother when he saw his brother's sacrifice was accepted. So what he did? He said, I'm going to kill you. For no reason. I want to kill you. And what is what Abel said? He said, وَلَئِنْ بَسَطَّ يَدَكَ إِلَيَّ لِتَقْتُلَنِي مَا أَنَا بِبَاسِطٍ يَدِيَ إِلَيْكَ لِأَقْتُلَكَ If you are going to extend your hands to kill me, I am not going to extend my hand to kill you. Means, I'm not going to go to, the, to your level of badness. I will surrender to my Lord. The good side within him was not letting him to fight against terrorist actions, but trying to uh, tell his brother that, look, don't try to kill me because I'm not going to do anything against you. I will submit. And he went and he killed his brother. And God killed him. After that time, God sent messenger Noah. Similarly, Noah calling people for their Lord. They attacked him, struggled between good and evil. They came to him and they bothered him. They harassed him. They did all kinds of worse things to him until God said, leave them, go build the boat. He's building a boat in the forest on top of a mountain. If anyone has intelligence, he will say, oh, what I'm doing, I'm crazy building a boat in the mountain? How is going to navigate through water? There is no water. But God supported the good one and sent a flood that he was able to navigate and the other died. God will punish those who are bad and support those who are good. Abraham, they throw him in fire. It's a struggle. It never ends. It's from beginning. Every century, it repeats itself. Every moment, it's repeating itself. Abraham, 
they throw Ibrahim alayhi salam, they throw him in fire, Nimrud. And Archangel Gabriel came to him and said, any, any help? He said, no. Why, the one who put me in this situation doesn't, need, doesn't know if I need a help or not? I'm not going to take help from you. I'm asking my help from my creator. And God made the fire to be like a cool breeze for Abraham. Means when we always try to bring goodness in front of people and show them the best of knowledge and teach them like institute like these universities around the world, they teach programs that these programs tells you about what is good, what is bad, and educate us. And students come educated to teach the other generations. After that, Moses, he was being attacked by Pharaoh, and he and his people were suffered, suffering for many, many years. Till today, there is a suffer. They are suffering. Jesus and his people are suffering till today. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also suffering. How much they suffered, these prophets against bad. Until today, Muslims also are suffering. So what we have to do then, what is, the, what is our duty as students? And I'm speaking to students, I know there are some other professors here, or, but we are speaking in general. What student they have to do? What everyone should do? As Sana Nadim said, I have traveled around the world. Yes, I'm, I traveled around the world. And I met many leaders around the world. I know that this is a nice gift that she put together tonight, but might be 50% of what we have gone through traveling from one country to another country. And we find the same thing, a struggle between what is good and what is bad. Those who have no mercy in their heart, you see from them come badness, evil. And those who have mercy in their hearts, you can see comes good. So one of the greatest Muslim scholars he is the son-in-law of Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi afdalu salatu was salam, the son-in-law of our Prophet. Sayyidina Ali karramallahu wajha wa alayhi salam, his son-in-law Ali, the fourth Khalifa of Muslims. He gave a very nice principle to follow. He said, as the professor just said now, he said, Rasul Hikmati Mahafatullah. The head of wisdom is the fear of Allah, of fear of God. Means if we have fear, as he said, the professor, we have ignorance, because ignorance bring fears in us. So it means we have to educate ourselves, enlighten ourselves, in order not to have fear, to develop a, a situation within ourselves that we can bring that light, that we, are, we, we miss that light in our hearts. As I, as, as I said at the beginning, Neither my heavens nor my earth contained me, but the heart of the believer contained me. To bring this manifestation back within our hearts, there we can know 
the enlightenment that God has created and ready to be given to anyone seek for it and ask for it. So our duty is to seek for ma'rifah, for knowledge. What Ali ibn Abi Talib, the fourth Khalifa of Prophet, the son-in-law of Prophet, which Prophet said, Ana Madinatul Ilmi wa Aliyum Babuha. I am the city of knowledge, and Ali is the door. Means without the door, you cannot enter the city. Means without the door, you cannot open the heart. You need the key. And not an ordinary key. Might be an advanced key. Like today, you have a password to enter any, anywhere you like. You need a password. Even to your computer, you have to have a password. Even to your money, you have to, work, to have a password from ATM machine. Sometimes they don't give to you. Why you don't give to you? It's my money. No, wrong password. Correct it. Then we have to call and correct our password. So let us correct our password tonight and take that principle that the son-in-law of Prophet said. So fear of God means take you to, to tell yourself that I am ignorant of my Lord. I have to learn more. And everyone in his own capacity. God will not give you more than you can carry. According to what you believe in, you follow. But follow, knock the door, they will open for you. If we believe in generosity, we know the one who created generosity is ready to give. But knock the door. They are not going to come to you directly and say, oh, take this. We are not prophets. We are not angels. So he said, first, you have, when you are sitting in a place and people are discussing issues or policy makers, like today we have too many policy makers around the world, advisors to different presidents, if they follow, not their ego, because problem is the ego plays a lot of big part in, in our life. The bad ego, the angry ego. You know, there are, anger is always within us. It's, a, it's an illness that destroy our personalities if, because we are angry people. If we become very angry, we don't know what to do, we might kill someone. That's why they are killing with no reason. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam predicted that 1400 years ago when he said there will come a time that لا يعلم القاتل لأي سبب سبب قتل ولا المقتول لأي سبب قتل that the one who is killing, he doesn't know why he is killing, and the one who is killed doesn't know why he is killed. No one knows. Only those who are sitting on their chairs, landlords. They want to, to divide the world, and everyone take a part. And not only that, everyone in, the <laughs> in small countries even, they make war between each other. So if we listen to what Sayyidina Ali said, the fourth Khalifa of Prophet, he said, very simple. First, as-sima. Give attention to hear, listen. Don't talk. Don't talk, listen. When you listen, you are hearing what they are saying. 
Because when you develop what they say and do you have an understanding, then you have to observe. Then don't give your immediate answer without observing. Like those who are playing chess. They cannot move one stone without thinking for hours and observing the opponent. So you observe means another. You have to look what, how they are reacting. After you are hearing what they are saying, how they are reacting. Then al haraka. Then you move. You make your decision. And then it will come like a wisdom decision, wise decision. Because you didn't talk at the beginning, you kept quiet, you listened, you observed, you moved. Then you are moving in the right direction. So in order to move in the right direction, I was in a in a conference in Malaysia, and it was about psychology and the different problems that we are facing today and the problem of people, their own problems. And the discussion was one of the big universities, I am not mentioning here the name, one, one of the deans of the big universities very educated person, I like him very much, he's Indian. He was explaining different theories about how to uplift yourself. And yes, he was true, as according to many theories, he say that we have to uplift ourselves by thinking and reflecting daily on what we do which is a prophetic, he is not Muslim, he is an Indian from another religion, Hindu. He was focusing on thinking and reflecting, meditating on anything you want to do, or you reflect on, on it during your day or during your night, which is correct. And Prophet, peace be upon him, Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, تَفَكُّرُوا سَاعَةٍ خَيْرٌ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ سَبْعِينَ سَنَةٍ He said, to think for one hour, to meditate, like you get a letter from IRS, I'm coming to audit you. Everyone gets afraid. What IRS going to do with him? Everyone begin to run, get an accountant, CPA, try to fix his books. Because they are auditing him. We have to audit ourselves. What we have done during our day was good or was bad. Prophet said, Tafakkuru sa'atin to think and to reflect one hour. It will be rewarded like you are praying 70 years. So to think, it's important. And to think what is good and to think what is bad. So he was saying that you have to think what is good. What you have done good in your life during that day, in your, in your day, and then you'll be able to uplift yourself to a higher level which in psychology is correct. But in my opinion, and I said, I am a student, I'm learning from you, I'm nothing, don't expect I am a, a scholar or, or teacher or professor, or, no. I'm at the door, might be at the shoes also. 
We are nothing. We don't claim anything. If we claim, we lose. We lose. We must not claim. Because Holy Quran says, according to uh, my belief, وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ Above every knower, there is a knower. Above every scholar, there is a scholar who is higher. Above every Gnostic, there is another Gnostic. Above every sincere person, there is another sincere person, higher. So always expect there is someone who knows more than you. And this life never ends with wise people. Always they are there. So we cannot claim anything because we might not know, we don't know what kind of knowledge they have higher than us that make us so little. And look at this universe. We don't know anything about it. We know a little bit. And we have to look and say, oh, it's a mystery. They came with the theory of Big Bang, but still it's a theory. We are not going to argue that theory now. But we have to know that there is above us, there is always knowers and knowers and knowers. So I said with my humble addition to what you are saying, I would like to mention to you that when I want to make an audit to my accounts, my f physical accounts, my money accounts, I like to make, I don't like to make any mistake. So I will look where there are mistakes. So first, my eyes goes on mistakes. That's why when you are a good person and you do a mistake, immediately you feel yourself, you did something wrong, you ask forgiveness, you repent. So the best is to look at what is wrong and what is bad within ourselves. When we count what is bad, then we can discipline ourselves. They asked someone, from who you learn discipline? He's a wise man. He said, from the one who has no discipline. I was looking at him or her and see what they are doing and I'm trying to avoid. So what is good today, the struggle between good and evil, is to look at the good people and to look at the ones that are bad people and try to avoid what they are doing. According to your intelligence, and we cannot say that people have no intelligence, no. And God said, as Prophet mentioned in his saying, لا فرق بين عربي ولا أعجمي الناس سواسية لا فرق بين عربي وأعجمي إلا بالتقوى. People are equal, like the teeth of the comb equal. There is no differences. There is no difference between race. All of them equal in, in the eyes of God. So what we have to do is to look at our mistakes. And our mistakes begin with anger. The trunk that has to be eliminated from our behaviors and our bad manners is anger. Because when we are angry, it's like we are drunk. We cannot think. That's why you see people are angry in some countries where they are doing things that are not acceptable. Blowing here, blowing there, blowing there, blowing there. For no reason. 
That's why when they came to me and asked me about suicide bombing, I said, no, no way it's in Islam. So this is a situation that we are living in today. We are giving a bad name for Islam as Muslims. Islam is perfect. It's perfect like moon. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم ورضيت لكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. Today I have perfected your religion. I gave you from my favors and accepted Islam as, as your religion. Don't put yourself into a bad position in front of God. You don't know when revenge comes. I don't like to say this revenge. God doesn't revenge. I like usually to speak about mercy, but here, because it's struggle against good and evil, between good and evil, what we can say, we have to say this. So, they, what comes is like we are on a highway, too many exist, exist on the highway. You choose the exit you like and you go. But there is the highway. The highway is the right path. as siratul mustaqim is the path to the journey to heaven, journey to the divine presence. But there are exits. Too many. If you exit, you lost. So what you do? You go back on the bridge, come back, and begin from beginning. So don't exit. There are 17 points, 17 bad manners that are dangerous ones that make you to exit. And then you cannot, it's very difficult to come back. And these, of, these 17 bad manners that we are exiting which we have to be able to realize them. When we realize them, that when we begin to eliminate them. Many people, they come and ask me some questions every day. And I ask, do you have this character? They say, yes, okay, eliminate it. So the, the main 17 characteristics are anger first. Is al-ghadab in Arabic. Be very angry. And then when you get angry, you lose your, your uh, uh, prestige. You lose your honor. You have no honor at that time because you don't know what you speak. Might be from your tongue comes bad words or bad actions when you get angry. It is the, that, that first exit that takes you to the other exit is anger. Eliminate anger. Second one, where people fight with each other. For what? For what we are fighting? If he's a doctor and I am a shoemaker, this is what I am. He is a doctor, I respect him. He respects me as a shoemaker because without my shoes, he cannot go to the university. He's stuck. He has to buy from me a shoe. So you want shoes or not? Uh, come and buy a little bit. Allah made him, God made him professor. God made this one teacher. God made this one key maker. Whatever it is. So why people fight? They fight for hubbu dunya, love of this world. Too much love for, too much love for bad desires. If you love for God, it's okay. Love to make money, to raise your children in the best way, to raise your family, to help your country, is no problem. But to raise money, to fight with people, and to be angry, and to be have a tough life, like a 
gangsters' life or drug dealers' life. These people are running only for their money that they are making and putting in the banks because of what? Because they love this dunya, they love this world. So second is the love of dunya. So you, for the love of this world, we might kill anyone. Third is al haqt the malice. To, to, have, to have malice against people. You, you hate them. You don't like them. You see them, they are successful. You, it's not jealousy, but you, f you feel bad and you want, want to hurt them. Try to eliminate that from yourself. If God wants you to be like that, you'll be like that. Try, struggle. When you struggle, you reach. There are many students, they go to university with respect to all the students. Some of them, they study very well, very hard at home. When they go back, they get, they get A plus. The other one doesn't work or go to disco or go to drugs and come next day, he takes C or D. Why you have to have hatred to your brother or sister in the school? When you wasted your time, they were studying. So that we have to eliminate from ourselves. For jealousy, hasad, to be jealous. When we look at someone, what he has, and we don't have, we get jealous. We want what he has. Although you might have a lot. Someone might have a Porsche, and he's happy with it. The other one has a Ferrari. He will say, why I don't have a Ferrari? I want a Ferrari, no Porsche. But you choose Porsche, you'll be happy with it, what you have. At least you will have too many girlfriends with you. <laughs> Why you want uh, a Ferrari? The other one say, oh, my father is rich, I am having a Lamborghini. So all the boys and the girls liked, like this boy because he has Lamborghini. So don't get jealous. Try, work hard, get a Lamborghini next, uh, next year or when you become a doctor or professor or whatever. Vanity, al-ujub, to be proud, to think you are the one, the peacock between the students. No, you are not. Don't think yourself you are Elvis Presley. No, there is only one Michael Jackson, so he's gone. So, then al-bukhul, stinginess, don't be stingy. If God gives you, give. And that's why we say that as tu tazidul umr, taruddul bala wa tazidul umr. Donation for institution, charity. Give charity. When you can to give charity to homeless people, to people who are sick, to universities to teach students, you are giving it in the right way. God like that, to be generous. Don't give it to blow someone out. No. Give it to fix someone. You will be a good person. It's a struggle between good and evil. You find many people, they give their money to, to, to harm others. But there are many people to give money to fix others. Atama, avarice. To be greedy, you want everything for yourself. You don't want anyone to have anything. You have to eliminate that. You have to eliminate that from our hearts. Al-jubun, cowardice. To be, to not to face problems. When you have a fear, face it. Learn about it. Okay, we have a problem today. As professor, I go back to the professor. As professor said, is he here or he disappeared? I'm not seeing. He, ah, okay. So the professor is not here, he ran away. So, but his spirit is here. So you have a fear, okay? Try to learn about it. Don't face it. 
Don't face the fear with problems, with, with obstacles. W try to learn why you have fear. If you have fear from Islam, go to those who are wise people within the Muslim community. Ask them. Islam has no fear, it's a, it's a heavenly religion. Like Judaism, heavenly religion, Torah, and like the Bible, heavenly religion, and other religions also. It's a heavenly religion, and heavens never give a bad religion. Always, all heaven religion has to be good religion, perfect religions. So if you have fear, means your fear is from Muslims, some Muslims' actions, what they are doing. Try to see, learn about what they are doing, and then you can say, this is wrong, what you are doing, Holy Quran said this, you are doing the opposite. So learn about the others. Indolence, al-batala, to be lazy, to sit at home, don't do anything. Say, oh, but there is no job. Many people, they say they've been fired from job, laid, o laid off. Okay. Prophet never allowed his companion to sit lazy. And all religions, you have no, nothing to do, go to, the, to your garden, dig, the, dig the, the, the soil, do something. Don't sit without anything. If you sit without anything, slowly, slowly, you become lazy, and then you, have, you will destroy your life. Keep strong, keep energetic. And we can go to all of these arrogance, ostentation, attachment, superiority, heedlessness, anxiety, laziness, and all of that end up in what? In you, if you have all these bad characteristics, and you up in depression. And today, it is the biggest market for doctors. Depression. Every student, not every student, some students, they come and they say, we have depression. Depressed. Why are you are depressed? I'm depressed. Why you are depressed? I'm depressed. What you are feeling? You are good. No, I'm depressed. They don't know why they are depressed. Might be her boyfriend left her, or his girlfriend left him, or, or uh, he took an F, or depressed. No, don't be depressed. Try to, when that comes, try to fight it. And try to be good and take depression away from yourself. So all these bad characteristics end in depression. And when you end in depression, then you lose your temper. You don't know what you will be doing. Oh, students, oh, professors, and me, I'm speaking also to myself. I am the lowest here. You are the highest. Islam is not only a religion to pra practices and formalities. It's also a taste. One big Sufi saint said, there are two kind of knowledges, and I will end with that. There are two kind of knowledges. Ilmul awraq wa ilmul azwaq. Knowledge of paper and knowledge of taste. Knowledge of paper is that you can it uh, means any, anything theoretical. It's knowledge of paper. They tell you this, 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 you memorize it, you pass, you take A plus, finish. You become a doctor, and then you go to the hospital to get a license. They say, no, wait. Break it down. Stop. You cannot treat patients. What you learn is theory. Come to the practical experiment now. You have to go residency, three years or five years or six years, whatever specialty you want to go through. So 
علم الاوراق is the knowledge of paper like I read some paper but علم الاذواق is the knowledge of taste we need to taste I can describe a, a very when you are thirsty and you are jogging or you are in a gym you want to drink and you are thirsty someone comes to you and show to you the bottle very cold bottle and all this condensation on, on, on it outside and say, oh, you like that? He say, yeah, please give to me to drink. He say, no, I describe it to you only. It's nice, it's sweet, it's cool, it's cold, it's, uh, it's made from plastic outside, inside water, but I'm not giving it to you. The other one comes to you and say, oh, this is are the features of this bottle, but go and drink, squinch your thirst. So religion must have a part in it that teach you the moral excellence. As Muslims, Prophet divided religion into three categories, and I am addressing this to Muslim and non-Muslim, and especially to Muslim students. Today we are only dealing with the infrastructure, the basic Muslim principles and we are leaving one of the most important and this is can be known from the hadith of the saying of Sayyidina Umar when Jibreel came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Archangel Gabriel came to Prophet and asked him what is Islam he said the five pillars of Islam then he asked him what is Iman what is the faith he mentioned six pillars of faith and I know Muslim knows. The six pillars to believe in God, in his angels, in his prophets, all of them. In his books, all of them. The Holy Quran, the Holy Bible, the Holy Torah, the Holy Zabur, and all, and all different books that came with different prophets. And the last day, the day of the resurrection, and with the destiny. These six pillars, this is the belief, to believe in God, that he is there. So when you establish the five pillars, the prayer, the fasting, the uh, donation, zakat, what Muslim they do, you see them in mosque and so on, they pray, they fast, they, they go for hajj, uh, pilgrimage and so on. This is one group of principles that you have to do, but you cannot leave the other two. The other two is the one, the belief, the faith, which I mentioned six pillars, means you have to believe in all prophets and to build bridges with everyone, with every religion, with every, every belief, because look at the good side, eliminate the bad side, build bridges. And the, f the third group is Maqam al-Ihsan, when he asked him, وَمَا الْإِحْسَانُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالْ أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهِ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهِ فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهِ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكِ He said, what is the moral excellence? What is the best character? وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ God said about Prophet, you are of the best character. What is the best character? What he answered? أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهِ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهِ To worship God as if you are seeing him. If you are seeing your Lord. Can you do something wrong? If from a policeman on the street right, by, uh, riding his bike, you are afraid you put your seatbelt. Immediately. Or if you are in Europe, if you are in UK, if you are talking on the phone, they stop you immediately. You are afraid. And Prophet said, the last one, the, the highest level, of uh, after uh, the five pillars and the six pillars, the last pillar, last one is to worship God as if you are seeing him. If you are not seeing him, he is seeing you. So, what do you want to do then? If, he, if you are not seeing him, you can see him in everywhere. You, there is touch of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of our Lord, 
There is a touch in everything. You see his, his greatness in everything. Look at, you look at the people here. You cannot see one look like the other. Is not his greatness? Go to the nature. You cannot find one leaf of a tree is, is resemble the other leaf of the tree. Everything different. And every spring comes different. And we, every generation comes different for us. This shows God oneness, shows God creation touched everywhere. Second, if you are not seeing him, he is seeing you. So how you pray and you have hate toward your brother or sister? How you be going to a mosque when you have hate to everyone? How you going to a church when you hate your neighbor? How you go to the synagogue when you have something in your heart to the others? Because he's seeing you. How you go to a temple when you have a problem within your heart? Don't make your heart a place for bad energy. Keep your heart for a place for good energy. There is nothing in this world except energy. Physicists, they know that in quantum physics, when they begin to get to check how much lower than a second, fraction of a second, and when they come 10 to minus 22 of a second, Time disappeared, everything was energy. Oh, people, students and professors, may God bless you all. And may God take away all this negative, negativeness, negativity from our hearts. And take all that bad feelings. There is nothing worse. You are living 70, 80 years, and you are going leaving this world and going. You, we don't know when we leave this world. We don't know. I, I will tell you one thing. One lady, she comes always to me, and one day her husband called me, and she said, in coma. He said, in coma. I said, what? She said she went to the dentist. She pulled her tooth, and blood was coming out. They were not able to stop the blood. They found leukemia in her blood. And they, she died within a week. She has six children. She's young. So we don't know. We don't know what will happen. So let us be good. And let us be friendly with everyone. And throw away all these ill feelings from our hearts. May God bless you and bless this country because we are living together here and we like to have a nice life and a good life for our children and for ourselves and for our communities. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Could you, could you take a sip?